Hi, I'm Tim. Join me in this video. I'll give you a short tour of my RC model airplane workshop, and I'll give you a minimum requirement of what you need to have for tools, equipment, etc. in your model airplane workshop. Let's get to it. I've been building model airplanes for well over 50 years, just in a variety of locations. In the course of my work, I've moved a lot, and I've come to get a minimum number of equipment, tools, procedures needed to build these models. So in this video, I'd like to go over with you what I've learned over the years that you can um, use to build a quite uh, large range of models. I enjoy working with a minimal setup. It suits me well for the models I type of build. There are some limitations. You might not be able to do large fiberglass models with this approach, but it works for me. And if you want to have a pretty good idea of the minimum you need to be able to build quality RC model airplanes, this would be a good introduction. So let's go over a few of the airplanes that I have built um, just over the past few years using this approach. Uh, we can very easily do the smaller models. This is Aguilo's conversion of the Aranka. Links for all of these projects are in the description if you'd like to see the building and flight process of this. Note also I use <clears throat> a lot of iron-on coverings. That's great for a minimal setup. They're just very easy to use. There's no odor problems in your workshop. This is the Clancy Aviation Speedy Bee. This is the Dumas um, Aranka C3 model airplane. And this is one of my original designs, a foam board, I call it the Bronco, uh, painted with acrylic paints. So this is my workshop. We'll give just a kind of overview. We have the working table here, the pegboard. I really recommend pegboard wherever you can in your modeling area. It's a great place to hang tools, smaller models, lights, things of that sort. And then over here is some storage areas. Uh, shelving is nice just to have a place to put things in your RC model workshop. The first thing you have to have is some sort of work surface. Um, in many cases where we've moved into various homes when I was in the Air Force, I would have to build my own work surface using two by fours and plywoods. It's not hard to do. This table right here is 32 inches high. I think that's a reasonable height. It is 34 inches deep. I'd say this is a good minimum requirement. How long? It just depends on your workspace. Once you have the work surface set up, it is absolutely crucial that you have a quality building board. This is my building board. It just rests on the work surface. This building board is about 35 years old. I got it from Guilo's. It is a balsa building board, and it's just served me perfectly over the years. What happens, it has pretty thick half-inch balsa going along here and this cross grain along here to keep it from warping. What you need on this um, building board is an absolutely flat surface, no warps, but it's going to be soft enough to insert pins as you're building your models. This is a, a must-do requirement, a, a flat surface for your building. The other thing you're going to need is a cutting mat that goes on here because when you cut your balls to pieces, if you cut on the balls, you're going to chew up your, um, your building board. So the mat is a, require, is a requirement, it's fairly soft so it doesn't dull your knives too much, but that is a, a necessity. The other thing that absolutely is a must do is an X-Acto knife. So there's various blades that you can have on an X-Acto knife. This one is the most popular one, it's just a number 11 X-Acto knife. If you go to Amazon you can easily find these. I use this for 97% of my construction. It, it works fine. The key point I want to make on these X-Acto blades are you've got to have a sharp blade. If you try to do tasks with a dull blade, the knife can jump, you can hurt yourself. It's not what you want to do. You just have to buy a lot of the blades. And this is a pack of 100 that I just got off of Amazon, X-Acto X -Acto number 11 blades. You can see that right here. The minute these things dull up, you take it out, I wrap it in tape so nobody accidentally cuts themselves with the trash, throw it away, get a new sharp blade. You just really have to do that. As I said in the beginning, this is a minimalist setup. These are the minimum requirements you, you need to be able to build some pretty complicated uh, models that fly well. For power tools, there is one power tool you absolutely must have, and that's an electric drill. You, you just have to have this. Uh, this is a Sears Craftsman. It's literally over 45, uh, over 40 years old. It works fine. You have a, a, a good heavy grip. You have a trigger. It's a variable speed, so it can go slow or fast. 
If you reverse the direction, and that's basically it, you will find that a hand drill just doesn't cut it. You've got to have a power drill. So invest in one of these, it can be used, but this is a good thing to have. Also, it's very easy to buy bits uh, at your local Home Depot or whatever. Just like the X-Axo blades, make sure your bits are sharp bits. Don't be drilling with uh, dull bits. It's just not worth it. The other power tool that you should consider um, is uh, a Dremel tool. So this is a Dremel tool here. It just has a chuck where you put in various um, devices that can do cutting. It has a um, variable speed. Could this suffice for the power drill? Possibly. I've just become so comfortable with the power drill. I like to have both. And what happens with a Dremel tool, you can see here there's all sorts of uh, chucks that can be put in for doing a wide range of activities. What I use it a lot for is this cutting wheel. Very handy for cutting music wire on landing gear. It's just something that's very nice to have. So I don't want to be against power tools. Any other power tools that you have the budget for in place in your shop, a scroll saw, belt sander, and so forth are extremely helpful. They're nice to have. They're not necessarily a requirement. It'll be up to you to determine how you want to set that, set that portion of your shop up. Well, these are not power tools per se. They are electrical tools, and these you have to have these tools. Because I use iron-on coverings for uh, a lot of my, well, vir virtually all of my balsa models, to include some foam board, you're going to have to have a, an electric iron, electric hobby iron, to apply the iron-on covering. Now, back in the day when everybody was building their own models, this was absolutely common. You might have to hunt around a little bit for it, eBay, Amazon, uh, tower hobbies and so forth. This one is 35 years old. They last a long time, but you've got to have this to iron on the covering. I very much like using the iron on coverings for covering my uh, balsa models, some of the foam board. This is monocoat. We have park light, aero light. There's a range of coverings for a range of models, different colors, different styles. The uh, tubes um, come, this is micro light, which is lightweight covering. The tubes all come with detailed instructions for how much heat you have to use to put it on. I, if I see a color I like or, or a brand, because sometimes they go in and out of production, I buy extra ones, so I have that. But these are a collection of iron-on coverings that are really nice for just about any model that you're going to build. You have to have a heat gun. It could be a hair dryer. This is a, a hobby heat gun. It doesn't even have a brand on it. Again, it's been around for 30 years or so. This heat gun is used to shrink the iron-on covering. The other thing you have to have, because I do electric flight, obviously this channel is electric powered RC model airplanes, you've got to be able to uh, do some light soldering. Soldering is new to everybody. I have some videos on soldering. I'll put them in the description. There's any number of videos on YouTube for soldering. What that means is you need a soldering iron. It can be a very simple soldering iron here. I got this off of Amazon. It's just a, um, it's just a soldering iron. For the light soldering that I do, this works out fine. And with the soldering, it's also very important that you get jigs. These are devices that hold the various parts when you're doing the Dean's connectors together as you're doing your soldering. In the early days, I made my own jigs. I saw this somewhere. It's called the Jigs Up. Somebody was selling it. Uh, just if you look for soldering jigs, these are, are worth um, the, the, the money to spend. They last forever, and that's very good for your soldering tasks. The final uh, electrical tool you'll need is a um, hot glue gun. I just got this off of Amazon. If there's any number of them, I think it was about $11. Uh, this is necessary for your foam board. Uh, make sure you know what size glue stick. This is the mini uh, glue sticks. Buy extra glue sticks. This heat gun is wonderful for the foam board. Uh, the Bronco, for example, the entire model was built with a foam gun, a, a hot a glue gun. They work really well with the foam board. Continuing on with some of the more major supplies you need, glue. We have to have glue to put these things together. Again, I use balsa and foam board for my construction. The foam board, the hot glue gun works absolutely fine. Certain cases with firewalls, I will use um, five minute epoxy. But let's go through some of the more common uh, glues. First of all, CA or cyanoacrylate is what everybody uses. I like the Bob Smith Industry glue a lot. I get this on Amazon. I like the medium glue that works fine for the vast majority of my tasks, but you have to have CA. 
Um, two ounces is an easy to work with side, a size, you get it off of Amazon. For some tasks that are very um, close fitting parts, you can use the thin cyanoacrylate. This stuff is literally water. It just there cannot be any gaps. It goes in uh, very instant bond. That's a good other CA to use. But again, the vast majority of my work is with the medium uh, CA glue. The other must-have is five-minute epoxy. There's a range of brands. Again, I use Bob Smith Industries off of Amazon. Five-minute epoxy. You mix equal parts together, mix it up. Five minutes later, it glues. It's absolutely strong and it, it, it fills gaps. It is just a, a necessary glue to have in your inventory. The other thing that's nice to have is what is commonly called canopy glue. It may have other names like Formula 560. What's unique about this glue is it's a kind of milky white shape, uh, color. You put it on and it's used to glue clear canopies on the models. It looks white, but when it dries, it dries clear. And it's very good at bonding estate canopies to the bottles. This is a good thing to have. So another thing, just to do yourself a favor, working with the glues, you're going to get the glue onto your fingers. It's going to potentially get uh, elsewhere. Treat yourself to a set of um, exam gloves. We got these at uh, um, Costco. You can buy them anywhere. There's 200 pairs. They work fine. It'll keep um, your fingers clean from the glue, paint, things like that. They're going to tear up as you use it. Just throw it away, put on a new pair. Even if you're doing a short glue job, I can use the gloves for a second time. I did so much gluing over the years that I actually lost my fingerprints for a period of time um, just because of the cutting and the glue and all this stuff. So um, use the uh, gloves. It, it, it's a good thing to do. I showed you the Bronco. There's other, many other models on this channel that uses foam board. This foam board is 3 16 inch sheet. It's got paper on both sides. I bought mine on Amazon. You can get it at craft stores. 20 inches by 30 inches is a pretty standard size. What you want to do as you experiment is make sure that you can pretty easily peel off the paper if you need to do that as part of your construction. I've had difficulties with some of the black coverings. It doesn't peel off that well. But at any rate, this is a foam board. This is a great thing to have in your modeling workshop. You can build prototypes very quickly, test them out, see how they work, and then go on from there. I've, I've really enjoyed making models from foam board over the past couple of years. One advantage of the foam board uh, use are just these common craft acrylic paints. They clean up with water. They have absolutely no order, odor. They cover very well, wide range of colors. Uh, they can, you can very quickly paint a model with these um, paints and it looks very nice. When you work with a foam board, and really even with balsa, do treat yourself to another tool. That's a quality metal straight edge. It'll last a lifetime. Uh, you can cut against it without cutting into the straight edge with your X-Acto knife, setting out lines, measuring things. A, a metal straight edge is a very good thing to have. When you build models, you're always searching for some nut, washer, piece of music wire. What I try to do is when I see some music wire that I think I may need in the future, I buy a little bit extra and just keep it. Also on Amazon, it's a great source to get just things like um, a range of screws that are here. Uh, these are additional screws. They have washers, all sorts of things. It's good to have these. You may use them as nose weight for your smaller models, uh, screws for servos, whatever. I have a wide range of those. It's nice to have those on the shelf just to reach and use them when you're at some critical stage of building. Another item that's very nice to have in your workshop is a heavyweight vise. I don't use that all this much because I do the smaller models, but you, where I, I do use it is bending music wire for landing gear. For the smaller music wire, for the smaller models, I could do it by hand with pliers, but if there's a larger model I'm building, you really need this in place to bend that music wire. Two other super important hand tools are a range of uh, saws as well as hand tools like screwdrivers, pliers, things of that nature. So I do an incredible amount of work with just one of these coping saws right here. You screw off the handle, these blades are replaceable. This is a very good thing. You can turn it 90 degrees if you have to cut this way. Typically, this the, the main hardware I work with is plywood for firewalls. This is a very useful thing. I have a backup here. There's other saws that you can get. They're all, um, and this one is strong enough for metal if you have to cut a metal tube somewhere along the line. In addition to the saws, the um, hand tools right here, I like a range of pliers, needle nose pliers, regular pliers. 
Phillips flathead screwdrivers, you probably have these in shops already. It's nice to have a range of tools for the various tasks. Also, Allen wrenches are absolutely crucial for various bolts that you use to control surfaces. This one has a range that I've just used for years. It works just fine. Smaller screwdrivers are always useful. It could be ones like this or ones like this. You'd be amazed at where you have a range of the screwdrivers. You get the one that fits just right. Will suit you for your purpose. Another critical thing is a sanding block. You can sand by hand. There's many times in the model you sand by hand, but there are times when you've got to have a sanding block to have a flat surface when you sand. This is actually an X-Acto sanding block I got years ago. This comes off. You can replace the sandpaper with a range of sanding grits. Uh, this works fine for your model building. Another item you should treat yourself to is a good field box. There's any number of uh, boxes you can see at Home Depot or these um, hardware supply stores. This is a plastic one here. Um, what I did, and I'll put a link of this um, in the description, I make a little checklist of things before I go to the field. Just something as simple as my batteries, the charger, sunglasses, hat, water bottle, so I don't show up in the field without a transmitter. It has little side trays here that are handy for putting things in. And what is good on this is I can keep my various um, AMA cards, FA administration. Uh, here's my trust certificate. All this is right here um, in case I have to show it to an inspector, something like that. Trays, just the equipment, chargers, a field battery for at the field for charging the batteries. Everything's in here, and it's good just to be able to pick this up, go to the field, and you don't have to worry about not leaving something behind at home. So do invest in a field box. Thank you for joining me in this video. Um, it was a pleasure taking you around to my workshop. This is a minim minimalist approach. These are the things I've used to successfully build a number of models over the years. You can expand from this, but if you have these basic uh, tools and equipment, you should be good to go for anything that you'd like to build.